What's up everyone, Adam from Cape Crawlers, and today we are revisiting the Axial UTB-18 Capra and throwing a whole bunch of new upgrades on this thing. Oh, the Capra. We have such a love-hate relationship. In the beginning, I got it just to do reviews and content on YouTube. I really was not interested in it. It was bigger than what I was used to. I was confused by the scale, but when I got it and started driving it, I really fell in love with it. And then I started modifying it, and I quickly past the point of diminishing returns and it has been a struggle ever since to get this thing back to the point where I enjoy it and want to drive it. We're getting back to that point now and that's going to be the goal of today's video. So we've got our hands on the brand new Fury Tech Python ESC. The Python should solve a bunch of issues that I have with the Capra. Number one is that it should provide smoother operation and less cogging from the motor. I've had a terrible time getting this thing situated where I get that really slow, super controlled feeling from the brushless motor that it has in it. So I'm really hoping that this new ESC will help us get there. The second thing that this should optimistically help with is more power, better output to handle bigger servos. Now I've seen demos of this running some pretty intense servo action and I'm really excited to put back on the four-wheel steering and run some juice to those things so that we can get quick and powerful four-wheel steering back on this rig again. I'm going to try some new servos today too. I've got my hands on some new KST low-profile servos I'm excited to try. And we've also got some new shocks from RC all-wheel drive. So we've got a bunch of stuff to put on the capper today. So this is going to be fun. So why don't we jump in, let's take a closer look at our upgrades, and then we'll take a look at the Capra as it is now, and then we will throw everything on it and see if we can get it back to the point where we have a lot of fun with it. It's capable, fun, and regains its status as one of my favorite rigs. So let's jump in and check them out. Here's our upgrades that we're going to be putting on in this video. This is going to be a fun project. I'm excited to kick it off. Let's take a look at the Fury Tech Python first because this is arguably what I'm most excited about. Now, if you've seen my SCX24 and AX24 review of the Python for those trucks, you know a little bit about the Python. If you haven't, let me give you a quick rundown of this thing. So this is kind of the successor to the Lizard ESC that is already out for the SCX24s and 18th scale and 24th scale mini crawlers. The Python takes a next step up with more powerful output. This has a 5 amp BEC built in capable of up to 7.4 volts so you can run some pretty significant power to your servos. It's got a waterproof plastic case. It has the built in Bluetooth module so there's no external dongle or anything hanging off of it. It's all built in in this nice case here. Supports up to 3S LiPo on here. And of course you've got access to the Fury Car app that lets you do real time tuning, lets you view real time telemetry opens up a whole lot of customization and tunability with that app. Now the size on this, it is slightly bigger than the previous iteration of the Lizard that's available for the UTB-18. Not significantly though, as you see, we've got plenty of room inside the cage to fit this in there. But I'm very excited about this. Hopefully that smooths out our power curve and can run our servos with ease. Speaking of servos, let's take a look at these new KST servos that I got here. Now this is a full-size servo. For tent scale rigs, this is a fast, powerful, and inexpensive low profile servo. Look at the profile on this thing. They're very short, which is one of the things that I really like because I was looking for something lightweight but still powerful to run in the four wheel steering of this truck. And I think this is exactly what I was looking for. Now, this is an IP65 splash proof rated servo it's a coreless dc motor has metal gears it's also programmable speed on these it is capable of up to 18 kilograms at 8.4 volts and 0 0.08 seconds at that speed we'll be running at the 7.4 which will be a 0 0.09 speed 15 kilograms of torque at that rating this does come with your standard set of horns one thing i'm a little disappointed about is that the horn that we're going to be using that it comes with is bright red which is going to clash horribly with all of the colors on the UTB-18, but I can always paint it if need be. First impressions, I really like these just because of the small profile, and on paper, they look to be really good, and they only cost 25 bucks, so potentially a great budget servo here. And last up, I have these long travel 
Not really a long travel. I think they're still around stock length. Oil-filled shocks from RC all-wheel drive. Now, I've run these in the past before, but one of them fell apart, and RC all-wheel drive was quick to send me a whole new set. So shout out to RC all-wheel drive for hooking me up and taking care of me. I like these shocks a lot. I have the RC all-wheel drive internal spring shocks on the UTB-18 right now, but these have the external spring and also has the adjustable collar so that we can take advantage of the preload adjustment on these things. So let's take a quick look at the Capra as it is right now, and then we'll get out and demo it. So here's the Capra as it is right now. See, it's running the Fury Tech Callion chassis. I currently have this Reefs Raw 500 servo up front, which is still powerful enough to brown out this thing's electronics and short it out when I really up the voltage on it, even just to the six and a half that the Lizard Pro is able to put out. So I'm gonna take the raw 500 out and I'm going to put it into one of my 10 scale rigs, I think is my plan. Currently running the RC all wheel drive aluminum housing up front and in the back. And you can see I'm running the internal spring shocks, like I said. I'm also running what you can't see in here is that I'm running the RC all wheel drive underdrive gears in the front and back here too. So when I swap out the housing in the rear, I'm gonna to have to take these ring and pinion gears out and put that in the front housing. I again tried to do that to slow this thing down and smooth out the power curve because I was just having such a hard time with the brushless system in it. So I am gonna keep those and if the Python helps us smooth it out, then we've just got even more of an advantage because we have the underdrive gears in it. I feel like this thing has plenty of wheel speed with the brushless motor in it. So I'm not worried about doing the underdrive gears. If anything, I would like to have a more aggressive underdrive gear in it. But let's get this outside. I want to demonstrate exactly some of the pain points that I have with it so that you can understand exactly what I've been running into, and then we'll start upgrading it. Let's see if I can demonstrate what I got going on with the cap right here. So if I come up against an obstacle, first off, you see how jumpy it is off the slow speed there. And if we come up to this, if I try to creep it, I just see, see it cogging and lurching. Now I am running the glitch buster on here as well that I learned about from Matt at 2FMRC, which is, that's helped a lot, especially with the servo. But I still just have this cogging and this jerky low end power that I'm really hoping to solve with this new upgrade. There's a good example right there. It's got the, it has the ability I just need more control. So I was also running the five volt output on the BEC. So I just turned it up to six and a half volts. So let me show you what happens here. See it glitch, the glitch out there. See, yeah, the, see the lights dim, steer installs out. And this is just one servo. So I wanna run four wheel steering and I wanna run big servos on it. So this is what we're hoping to solve with the Python. Just pausing for a minute because I just got my rear axle assembly all done. Got the gears swapped over. Got the new KST servo input on here. Thought this was a good opportunity to stop and show you guys the size comparison. So check out the low profile on that thing compared to the Eco Power that I just took out. Significantly shorter on this. Probably five to six millimeters, I would guess. Maybe more as far as the length of it 
it fits perfect on the Capra axles. Look at that. This is ideal for the UTV-18, just exactly what I was looking for. And the black horn that came off the EcoPower fits on the KST, so I don't have to use that bright red horn after all. So pretty stoked on this. Now I'm going to move on to assembling the Capra. I'm going to put the axle on and start wiring things up. We'll get the Python installed and the shocks as well. So this was the most tedious part. Now that we're done, we're going to start ramping things up and it should go pretty quick. quick pause here again just to show you a size comparison of the python versus the lizard pro so much wires going on here so as you can see the python is actually quite a bit bigger height wise it's nearly identical they both have these plastic cases the height is very similar but the Python is probably four to six millimeters longer, I would say. So it is noticeably bigger, but thankfully with the Capra, we have plenty of room in there. So I'm not concerned about it, but I just want to show you that real quick. We're moving right along. I'm going to attach this to our radio link setup that we have in here. I'm getting ready to button up everything. I'm going to plug in the servos, cram everything in there away from the motor. Hopefully we can make it clean enough. Get that stubby little battery connection close enough to the front. It's going to be tough. All right, home stretch. Let's get everything plugged in and installed, and we'll fire this thing up. Okay, my friends, just got the Capra fired up. So I went in the app, I got the app updated, got the new firmware installed, been playing with it. So a couple of things that are interesting that I've found out thus far. Number one is that I had the option to put 8.4 volts to the servos. So I upped the voltage to the full 8.4. So we'll see how that works. Another thing is that I didn't see the FOC field oriented control options available even though that's supposed to be a feature so that was not available to customize in the app but what i did notice even though this thing has like its guts hanging out here but one thing i did notice right off the bat is that it is much smoother off the bottom Even in this situation right here, it is noticeably smoother from a response standpoint. So I'm optimistic that this is going to be good. Now let's check out our steering setup here. So we've got these KSD servos running at 8.4 volts, if that is indeed correct. So let's check it out. Pretty quick. bad at all for a $25 servo. Now if I can switch these around. Oh, oh yeah, look at that. And no brownouts whatsoever there. See, this would freak out with the previous setup. Having no problems here. Oh man, what a relief. I'm so pumped. This is good. All right, cool. Now, the only thing I've got to figure out what to do with is this big mess of electronics. You see all this I need to tuck in here somewhere, but 
I think I've got room in the front of the cage is my plan. So I'm gonna button this thing up and then we'll see what it looks like all together and get it out on some terrain and see how this thing works in the real world. So I'm pumped, so let's check it out. I right, have moment of truth with the capper out here. Got the recovery mission going on over here. Yep. Let's see how this thing does. All right, let's put up against some obstacles and see. Not much cogging there going on. Seems nice and smooth. Much better than before. It's looking pretty good. Oh, I might have our Capra back again. Still pretty jumpy, but I can tune that with the throttle. The cogging was my main issue. Let's try that. I turned the voltage down to 7.4, mainly because the light and things, the fog lights and the light bar were getting so hot, it was almost melting the plastic. I was smelling this thing burning. And come to find out it was the plastic on the light bar when it had it at 8.4 volts. This is way better. Oh, I'm so pumped. doing awesome. Super impressed with the Kappa right now. <laughs> oh, that was gnarly. Oh, man, that's all she wrote for battery. Such a bummer. The batteries do not last at all on this thing. So all told, I got about eight minutes of run out of that battery, which is a bummer. I got the testing that I did on the bench last night and I got about five minutes of run time here today. But I am thrilled with how the Capra performed. No brownouts. The KST servos did excellent. They worked great on this pretty gnarly terrain out here. The Capra was very smooth and I feel like I can tune that low speed enough. It should be good. 
So I'm bummed I didn't get much time on it today, but I'm really happy with how it performed during the short time that I got to try it out. The Python, let's talk about it. Bottom line is that it put the fun back in the Capra for me. The UTV-18 is once again a joy to drive. And although I did not get much time on it because my runtime is still atrocious and I forgot to bring extra batteries, it was evident from the short time that I spent, it was vastly improved from the previous iteration. And although I don't have the linear, super smooth power band that I'm used to in some of the smaller scale systems that Fury Tech offers, it is miles and miles away better than it was before. The KST servos on here at both ends worked extremely well. They provided quick steering, put up with some abuse on that gnarly rock section that we were in. They're quiet, fast, and powerful. So definitely a bargain for those things. And I'm just super pumped to have the four wheel steering back in action on this thing. It's just super fun on this truck and works really well with this setup. Speaking of setups, we put the RC all wheel drive shocks on it. I still feel like it sits a little higher than I would like. Weight distribution on it is pretty good. It's 56 front, 44 in the rear. Not bad for a first pass. So I got a little bit to do to shift a little bit more of that weight forward. I'd like to get that a little more balanced in the front. I wanna tweak the suspension a little bit more to see if I can get that ride height squished down a little bit more. But all in all, I'm super happy with the rig as it is right now. Some of the things to note, so in my first demonstration on the table with the UTB-18, when I fired up the Fury Car app, I did not have access to the FOC, which I thought was odd, but I just chalked it up and maybe this is a prototype and it wasn't ready for release yet. But when we got to the crawling spot today and I fired up the app again, the FOC was available. So maybe I just had to close the app and reopen it for things to refresh. I'm not sure. But in any case, Got the FOC adjustment back and now everything's good. I got full range of customization available. So after a frustrating run with the UTB-18 Capra, I'm happy to say that it's working great. These mods that we threw on it today, all of them work amazingly well and I'm super happy with them. And I'm pumped to drive the Capra again. I wanna get a bigger battery and a fresh battery and I wanna go out and run it again. So super happy with it. I'll put the links in the description down below for all the products that we used in this video. The Python is available at $89.99, which is the same price as the Lizard Pro, which is currently available for the UTB-18 Capra. So it's kind of a no-brainer to get the Python because it is a vast improvement over the Lizard. If you've got the brushless system for the Capra and you're as excited as I was for the Python, I can tell you that it's worth the wait and you're going to love it. The Python Pro is not yet available. When we get the Python Pro, I'm really excited to try that out. We'll be able to run up to 4S on that thing. It's going to be bonkers, so stay tuned for that. But let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. What do you think of the UTB-18 Capra with the Python on it? As always, I appreciate your time. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so, and I will see you in the next video.